Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Lords of the Fallen with me, Bracket Dawn. Let's go beat up that Crimson Rector. Easy peasy. Let's try out some different throwables here. So we have a poison javelin. We've seen the javelin in action. So why would you use... Oh, because it scales with strength. No, it doesn't scale at all. It requires strength. Why would you use the Forsaken Grenade over the Snake Oil Grenade? The Snake Oil Grenade has more poison buildup and it costs less ammunition. It makes no sense. We'll try both and see what the difference is, but the snake or grenade inflicts physical damage and poison buildup and reduces physical resistance. This seems like it just leaves a cloud on the ground, but that doesn't seem nearly as good. I mean, honestly, I'm fine with waiting for these guys to die because they're the reason why this fight's so hard. <laughs> I don't want to fight the Crimson Rector inside in Umbral again. See, so once the cloud dissipates, they're still taking poison damage. Down they go. Oh yeah, this guy's got the Parasite. Not anymore. Alright, so I, I see the difference now, and why the other one's so beneficial. So I might uh, keep that on hand for a bit. Alright, let's go fight this guy. Throw that far? Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's bring him out here. Shit. <laughs> 
Try to heal up. Didn't realize he's gonna attack the second time there. Really don't want to be doing this fight in Umbral. I'm not going to. <laughs> Screw that. I have souls on the line, or sorry, vigor, and they're where the Crimson Rector's at. And I need two more level ups to use, try out that one sword. Now the hammer that I have would be good against the withered enemies. I'm pretty sure they're weak to holy damage. Good for you, buddy. Oh, what? He was so far away. I disagree. You know what? We could probably clear out all these guys. I have an idea. I do this all day. It's a little cheesy. Alright, Christian Rector, let's try this again, buddy. Oh, missed. Oh, we both missed, so it's okay. We'll call it a draw.
So the Hollow Knight sword, I think, is the starting equipment for the Hollow Knight starting class. Alright, the blood letter. Uh, let's get back to our seedly. We wasted enough time on this little area. Now we do have the elevator we can go check out. In fact, I'll probably do that before we go up the other side. Because we haven't found a vestige up the elevator on this side. Alright, so two points into Radiance. So we try out that new sword. <laughs> we'll take it easy. The crossbowmen weren't so annoying. I think if they didn't get two shots per reload, I wouldn't mind fighting them. Fell down and died to the poison. Great. Keep running, too, buddy. Hey, okay, another marksman crossbow. I'm gonna swap back to this hammer and hope that whoever we're fighting up top aren't resistant, resistant to holy damage. Yeah, Man of the Hollow Brother. So this is a new location, but we didn't find a vestige yet. That's why we're heavy with this. That's why I wasn't using this. Not because of the holy resist. Can't get up there. Now I did find a vestige, so do I want to go this way or the other way? The other way didn't have a name, right? Bearers the Chard. So I don't know which way I want to go. We have a vestige in each direction. Pathway. Well, the Umbral Lamp may revive fallen flesh. It does not dull the agony of injury or death, or the potential trauma of any accompanying memories. The Lamp Bearer named Ferrers experienced his first demise engulfed in searing waves of inferno magic, a prolonged and excruciating end which instilled in him fear of fire, a fear of fire. Curiously, Ferris is often seen in the vicinity of flames afterwards. 
Although whether this was an effort to overcome his fear or a morbid fascination with that which had aggrieved him so, none can say. Pretty sure we can't drop down there. We also can't get back to our vestige. I guess we could jump across here. Yeah, we can only see two of the beacons here. Oh, that's the enemy here. <laughs> Screw you guys. These things are so annoying. Oh my gosh, those guys are so annoying. Alright, so we need to answer Emperor there and get ready for their ambush. They follow you for so long. You backtrack as much as you want to try and heal. They're just right on top of you. It does not feel like there's an opening. That is a new helmet. They sell some of this stuff. All the uh, redundant stuff. Right, so the Crimson Rector gauntlets are new. Uh, gauntlets of a Crimson Rector. Nothing special there. I've seen the Pure Blade helm before. I thought we saw the Pure Blade armor before. No, it was the antique hollowed sentinel armor. Armor of a Pure Blade. And a vowed helmet, or helm. Helm of a low ranking hallowed sentinel who has earned the privilege of dying for the glory of the cleric, if little else. For many years now, almost all pilgrims who have overcome the necessary trials and been inducted into the hallowed sentinels have never seen the cleric in person, although the horrors both suffered and perpetrated in her name have continued unabated. thing. I have the wrong thing equipped. There we go.
Uh, come here, you little gargoyle jerks. back this way just to make sure I miss any paths or hanging off the cliff or anything. I don't see anything. Can we get through the gate in Umbral? No. Oh my goodness. That would have been a way to go. really need better guards. Either they're asleep or their backs are facing the wrong way. How's it going, buddy? I don't walk too far forward in case he has allies hiding around the corner. Crossbowman up there. I realized too late he was even shooting at me. Oh, wait, Max went right through him. That was the malarkey. I've never seen any. I'm going to be an umbral anyway, so I guess that works out. Really? Alright, that's annoying. And enjoy that little treat, jerk. Alright, since we're in Umbral, we should probably keep our weapon buffed up with radiant damage. Find a way to open up this thing. I'm just gonna ignore him. Oh shoot, there- I forgot to look at my notes. We have that golden, um... map for this. We have those uh, golden moths we have to go look at. I saw them, I, I jotted down in my notes and I forgot, I keep forgetting to flip my notes before I get started. Or if I do, I get distracted because there's things to fight. Yeah, these guys are a little tougher, we can't two-shot them anymore. Even with uh, a plus three axe, so this might not be the correct path. This is um, meant for later.
No, since we opened up a shortcut, maybe it's fine for us to backtrack. I mean, it's definitely fine for us to backtrack regardless. Actually, the wrong way. Yeah, because we have this shortcut. We'll have to have those gargoyles next time, thankfully. Ooh, that was kind of close. So I think it was next to the... Actually, where was it at? It was somewhere from this seedling. I think it was this way. Have I gone out here yet? I thought I did. Let's just double check and make sure it wasn't this way. Yeah, it might be up here. I know where it's at. It's only this ramp to right in front of me, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I have no idea what the heck that is. That almost looks like one of those gargoyles. Well, glad I did it. The Emerald Scour Rings aren't common. Right, so we have to decide if we want to continue into Kalrath, which is, I think, the primary way forward and probably the area we're most leveled up for. Um, we also have these two optional paths, which may not be optional in the future. So maybe we continue through Kalrath until we reach the next beacon, and then we explore these locations, so we're not struggling as much. No idea. Well, we didn't get a lot done. We didn't really venture far from some of the vestiges. <laughs> oh, there's a thing right above me. How did I get to that? Alright, did I pick up any items that I haven't read the descriptions of? A oh, Vigor Moth that recovered my... An Umber Moth used to prevent loss of Vigor upon death. Oh, that's right, we got the Blood Letter and the Hollowed Knight Sword. The Blood Letter, a barbaric hollowed sense in a weapon designed to tear flesh and, more importantly, shed blood with each stab and slash. Alright, the description below it we've read before, I think. And the Hollowed Knight Sword, sort of a Hollowed Knight that's starting equipment. I think that was it. I was probably going to equip this uh, stronger spell. 
Because we have Radiant Flare, but we have the uh, Piercing Light upgrade. Also, we're really close to leveling up, aren't we? Yeah, so let's use a skull. And actually, we can go do that and equip that new sword. Let's see what it's all about. It doesn't over encumber me. Uh, bloody glory. I'm, I have to be overlooking it. They're organized by weapon category. Short swords, long swords. Axes, grand axes, hammers, so that the grand sword. Oh, here it is. Uh, we are heavily encumbered. It's a very intense looking weapon. It has a similar moveset to the. Um, long sword. How's it compared to the X? Probably does more damage because of the higher stat requirements, even with the upgrades. No, it's actually saying the X is better. I mean, it is plus three, so it makes sense. And it scales with strength. For this C. Bloody Glory's a C with Radiance. I don't know, maybe we'll give it a shot. Well, maybe not, because we need encumbrance. So we'll focus on... um. Getting my endurance up. Alright, well, I'm gonna call it here, and next time I guess we'll continue through Kalrath. It seems like the most logical path forward. Um, since the other areas are a little bit tougher, we can always come back to those later. But we'll head towards the next beacon, I think, and then once we hit that checkpoint, we can go to those other locations because they might lead the beacons as well. This might be where the game kind of opens up. It's like, hey, you can go after whatever beacon you want to. If you're up for a challenge, but no, we'll see. Either way for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.